Piezoelectropuncture, or PEP, is a revolutionary new practice bridging the cavernous gap between modern Western science and the enigmatic metaphysical. By combining the principles of piezoelectricity, the anatomy of acupuncture, and the benefits of energy manipulation, the Green's Academy of Spirituality and Metaphysics, or GASM, have ushered in a new age in which one can reap the advantages of a painless and effective energy healing while resting assured that this is a practice rooted in science. Welcome to your piezoelectropuncture session, and we do hope that by the end of the treatment, you feel even the littlest bit better. Quite a nice little introduction to our session, is it not? Yes, I quite enjoy the little program that was put together specifically for these sessions. Now, I know that the overview gave you a little bit of information about our treatment, but was there anything else that you were unclear about? Right, yeah, it didn't really describe the process, did it? No. So, what we will be doing with piezoelectropuncture with you today is depending on your particular needs, which we will ascertain during the intake process. Depending on your needs, we may employ the use of different instruments or different stones in an effort to tailor the session for you. Whatever I feel that your energy needs, which again, I'll be finding out during the session, then I will choose what I believe will work best for us. So here, I have a little bag of different stones that we may possibly employ. I also have a few different specifically designed hammers here. And I think from what I'm picking up on you so far, just from, well, if you don't mind, I'd like to just play with your energy field a little bit. I have a feeling Just doing a little bit of almost kneading like a cat would, testing the pliability of the energy field. Okay, so upon first, upon first palpations, I think that we will be using our classic Tromner hammer. Now, we can use a wide variety of percussion instruments. We've been able to use the Taylor hammer, for example, with no problems. That's the classic little triangle with the metal blade attached. We can also use a buck hammer, which looks kind of similar to this. We can use a queen square. There's quite a few different types of hammers we can use, but just, just from a little bit that I'm picking up from you, apologize if this is a little close. Yes, I think we will, we will do the Tromner hammer. So, what an introduction, huh? So to answer your question, that will be a little bit of our process. Now, is there anything in particular you wish to target with our piezoelectropuncture? Any particular concern or stress or maybe even malady? Mm -hmm.
very good. No, that's just fine. There is no concern too big or too small that we cannot address. Now, for this practice, I will need to get kind of close to you, sort of what we've already been doing here, but I might get just that much closer. And I will not need to be touching you, but I will be touching on your energy, okay? All right, so first, let's get in pretty close here. And I think, let's see, we've already done a little bit of kneading, but I just want to, I want to manipulate the energy a little bit. I want to look at its texture, its quality, its resistance. I may even take a few samples. Let's see. The thing about piezoelectropuncture is that it is a beautiful union of science and metaphysics. I studied at Green's Academy of Spirituality and Metaphysics, which is where I got so much valuable information about the intersectionality of these different, what we call perhaps pseudosciences and modern Western medicine. and how we can combine the two to create a wholly effective treatment, I think. Okay, so a lot of the kneading is giving me about the same picture. So let's, let's go in a little more focused. I appreciate you sitting so still. Your, your aura has a little bit of chaos to it. It's a little, it's almost like a waterbed. It undulates. But with you so calm, it seems to be following your lead. The waves are indeed lessening. to say, I am quite, I'm quite enthralled, I think, by the way your energy just moves. It's so, there's certainly a lot of uncertainty. I can see that, but there is something lurking underneath the surface that I have not picked yet. It does pique my curiosity. Let me see, I'll do a little bit more fine point work, but I wanna see, I wanna see what samples of your energy look like. You would be a wonderful test subject, I think, for your energy. I could see the Greens Academy of Spirituality and Metaphysics, I could see that they would have quite a good time with your energy. They do like to study different unique forms of energy fields. Oh, yes, I'm not sure. It's, it's something. There's something there. Let me see if I can just tease out a little sample. So I'm just going to brace my hand here, support it a bit, and then just pull, pull. No, that's, it's a little stuck here. Pull, pull, pull. There we go. It 
has a silvery texture to it. Silvery, yes. Not satin. Satin has a bit of a catch to it, but silvery. Like water, almost, but with a little more resistance, a little more weight. Huh. Let that one go. It'll come back if it needs to. I'm gonna have to roll up my sleeves for this one. spin this one and see if it pulls out a little easier. Okay, a little bit. Silvery. Has some weight to it. It's a bit rigid, which I saw when I was trying to pull it. It does have rigidity to it. Let me look in my bag of tricks. Carnelian. Perhaps. Oh, let's see. We do have this banded agate as well. Hmm. Already not feeling the tiger's eye as much, so we have the carnelian and the banded agate. Da, 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 da. You know what? Let's just let's just test this here. I'm just going to put this along your energy field, and I just want to see how it responds. Hmm. Okay. Carnelian it is. Carnelian and the Chomner Hammer. So now that we picked a stone, I can tell you a little bit more about what we'll be doing. I am going to be using this point, and I'm just going to be placing it on your body, but this is a very rounded point. It's not going to hurt. It's not sharp. And what I will be doing is I will just be tapping on the carnelian. Now, what happens in this reaction is that when I tap on the crystal, it creates a spike of energy, which is to be used to help unblock your energy and restore its balance. Now we will use the anatomy of acupuncture points in order to in order to assess where we need to apply our energy spikes. So there will be some points on your face, the top of your head, your clavicle, your arms, your legs, your back. Okay? So now this is the point where I will need to be touching you only with the stone. Is that okay with you? Do you have your permission to do that? Wonderful. Thank you. So let's start right about here. 
right around the third eye area. Now, again, this will not hurt. You will just feel a tap, 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 where I tap the percussion instrument, our little hammer, on the carnelian. So we're going to place this right here. We are just going to Ten taps on the third eye. Now, I like to do the outer corners of the eyes. Good. Excellent. And now if we could do this little divot right here between your upper lip and your nose, okay? Good. Wonderful. How are you feeling so far? I can already see a little bit of activity going on. So now we're going to be tapping along your chin. So right where your chin makes this fold, going to be tapping right there. If you could just stretch out that area. Good. Very good. And how was that? Okay, there was just a tiny twinge of a change. Usually does a little bit better for me if I check in after a good amount of, of piezoelectropuncture points. So now we're going to be doing the top of your head just about where your crown chakra would be, if you could think of that. So if you could just lower your head for me. Good. And we are just going to... Good. How was that? Okay. We're going to move on to your arms. There are quite a few points on your arms, and I will be going one arm and then the other. We will start with your right arm, I think. So, now that we've gotten a little, a little more comfortable, let's see. So, the first point is going to be at your cubital fossa. Your cubital fossa is this little divot in your elbow right here, the bend of your elbow. We're going to start with that, okay? So if you could just relax your arm for me. Very good. And now let's see. Okay, so we are going to do on your thumb. There is a point right where your first joint in your thumb meets the anatomical snuff box area. So if you curl your thumb like this, you'll see there's a joint right in here. We don't usually think about, we think about this one. And right just below that area is where we're going to do our next point. You could just, yep, relax your hand. Very good. And now if you could show me your wrist. I'm going to be doing a few points in this area. Right, right like here. Okay. All right. And we'll do three taps on each point. 
good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now let's do the very center of your palm right here. Good. And then the center of your thumb, right on the pad of your thumb where you have this very tiny little, little gathering of skin. Good. Very good. Now, let me look at your, let me look at your energy a little. trying to be a little sneaky on me, I think. Okay, so let's see, where are the boundaries? It's gone a bit transparent. And that's not out of the realm of possibility. Sometimes the aura likes to... It likes to give off a few different reactions when we are trying to bring balance back into your energy. Because even though we are trying to help, it is still a change, and your energy wants to compensate for that change. Okay, so I think to better monitor it, I'm going to add a little bit of a contrast solution, if you will. So, in this very pretty little vessel here, we have a little bit of, looks like water, but it is charged with a little bit of essence, a little bit of, of intention, and this is used to just give the aura a little bit of, of a contrast, of a dye, almost. So, you are not going to feel anything, I'm just going to give it a couple of spritzes, and we'll, we'll see if that helps. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a lot better. There we go. Very good. So let's go ahead and restart on the other side, your other arm here. So we will start with the cubital fossa. So if you could just relax your arm. Just relax. Good. All right, that had a little bit of an effect, so I can monitor the energy. Good. Okay, let's go ahead and take it to the base of your thumb. Very good. And let's go ahead and do the three points right up the radial artery along the base of the thumb. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Okay. And the center of the palm. Okay. And then the pad of the thumb, the center of the thumb. Okay. 
Very good. Okay. Now we are going to be moving from your arms to the clavicle. So we will be doing a point above the clavicle as well as below the clavicle. Okay? So just hold still for me. We'll do right side first. Okay? And below the clavicle. Looking good. And the left side. And below the clavicle. Very good. Okay. So now we are going to be moving to your back, your posterior body. So I will be doing a couple of points on the back of the head. I will also be doing down along the spine. And about where your sacrum is, is going to be the lowest that I go. So it's not going to go any lower than your pants line. And then we'll bring it back around and look at your legs and your feet, okay? So I will be out of view for just a little bit of time, and then I will be coming back so we can finish the piezo electropuncture session. All right? Give me just a moment. There. And there we are. Very good. Now, let's see. Just checking the energy out first. All right, let's go ahead and what I'm gonna have you do is I will have you just lower your head a bit, bow it forward, and right, right here where you are spine meets your head here. This is your occiput and there are there are some spots here. They are on either side of the occiput. Let me get just a little bit more. There we go. So let's do right here on the right side going to go good and on the left side excellent now there are going to be several points that are going to be running down your spine so you have your spine and then I will be working on either side of the spine. I'm not going to be working over the bone. Now I will be starting right about where your shoulder blades are and continue downwards. We'll do one side first and then the other side and then we'll finish with the lower back, okay? Let me just start with the right side. Okay, and each of these will be three taps. you doing? All right, I'm going to switch to the left side. We'll do the left side of the spine starting where your shoulder blades are. 
Okay. Okay, and then we will be doing your lower back. So this is where we switch it up a little bit, and this time we go from left to right. And I will just be going in a straight line across your back. So we will start again. This is about where the sacrum is. That's where your pants line is. And I'm going to be just going along that line, starting here on the left side, okay? We have a few different points here. Ready? Okay. Is that it? And on the right side. Last point. Okay, and then we will be coming back around. Very good. If you'll just give me a moment to get my area situated again. Here we go. And now we're going to be working with the feet, the legs, and even up into the hip. Again, I will start with one side and complete that side before we flip to the other side. So we're going to start with your right leg. And first we have a position on the top of your foot here. Okay, so yeah. Good, and then we go all the way up the shin to just below the kneecap. Okay, and then we also have just above the kneecap here. And then on the back of the knee, there are a couple of spots as well. So this might take a little bit of finagling. Okay, there we go. Yep, if you could just extend your leg a little. There we go, okay. Good, and the other point. Very good. And then there are two points on the hips, okay? So we have right here. And just to the side here. Okay. And then we have your other leg. So we start with the top of the foot. And then we move up the shin to just below the knee. And just above the knee. And this is where I will have you extend your leg again, just like that. Good. That makes it much easier for me to get the back of the knee. Okay. Good. 
and the other point. Good. And then we have the last two points on the hip. And the other. Good. Let's put that down for the moment. So let's take a look here. First, I want to ask if you feel any changes at all. Maybe a little bit of heaviness to the body. You may feel your breathing change it even out or deepen. You may notice that the room looks a little brighter, a little more clear. Perhaps your hearing is a little less muffled. Anything of that sort? I do forget the, the most common one, which is a general sense of relaxation. Are you experiencing any of those effects? Okay, so it looks like we are definitely on the right track. Now, our contrast dye did fade a little bit, so I want to... I want to add a little bit more, and then I'm going to recheck the aura and just make sure that we ticked all of our boxes. use it a little bit. And there we are. Perfect. Perfect. Now, let's see if we can just... Uh, it's a lot more flexible. Which is interesting because it had its own movement, but the actual boundary was rigid. It does seem to be calming a little. So I can perhaps think that the turbulence may have been legitimate, emotional turbulence. It may have been a little bit of wariness, perhaps nervousness. Maybe anxiety. I just don't usually see it manifest in that sort of way, which is another reason why you are very unique. You are one of a kind. Okay. I like the bounce back that I'm seeing here. I really do. Good. Let's do a little bit of fine point work. Okay. 
Lastly, let's take a little sample. Now, I pulled from here and I've pulled from here. So I think, let's see, the last time it worked, if I just swirled my fingers around a little bit, bracing myself and pulled, pulled. Good. It is thinner. Feels almost as if I have a bubble in my hands. You know that that silky, oily sheen. Much more pliable. Much more stretch. A lot more resilient, which is what we like to see. So it thinned out and it lightened quite considerably in weight and in consistency. Now let's get a little sample right about here. Let's brace. It's a lot easier to feel if I don't look at it. It's almost like it's like overriding your dominant sense, which tends to be your sight, and instead putting focus into the tactile. Yes, I quite I quite like the feel of that. It is Silky. I quite like a rubber band with how it stretches. It does snap back quite quickly. So all good things that we like to see. Pliability and resilience are two very important qualities. It'll come back if it's meant to. Now, I think that that means you are in good shape. And I believe our piezoelectropuncture treatment was a success. Now, I am just going to put away my tools and my crystals. Now, this room is booked out for the next couple of hours. We have seen in our studies before we started releasing piezoelectropuncture as a modality treatment option that our test subjects had gotten very relaxed and some even fell asleep. Now, if you wish to fall asleep, or if you wish to just relax, you're more than welcome to, and you don't have to worry about getting up anytime soon. Okay? Do you have any other questions for me? All right. Well, you be thinking about that. I'll circle back one more time when I am finished placing my crystals back in their bag. You would think for such a scientific healing modality that we would use something a little more sterile, perhaps, for the crystals. But they really like the tool. Crystals have a heart and mind of their own. That's why they are so effective in so many different applications.
back in its rightful place. Now before I go, I'd like to ask once more, is there anything at all that I can do for you to make your stay any more comfortable? I'd like to thank you so much for coming to me, for having your piezoelectropuncture treatment. And I really hope that it was extraordinarily soothing and wonderfully relaxing. I hope you have a whale of a day. <laughs>